more of an impromptu session for me. And like yesterday evening, so whatever I have been able to do, I put it my knowledge, my 10 years knowledge of project management into this. Okay. So everybody might have written an email yesterday what you have got. So what are we expecting out of this session? Best practice is the own project. Okay. No deadlines will be missed after this session. <laughs> I don't want to treat Shreetha, 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 I have to attend this session. This is more of an inside trade. So, what I am talking about is, what is a project, what is project management and how do we ensure we execute the project properly. We are not expecting people to become project managers after this, but definitely how, what all things we should take care of. I will just go through that. We'll come to this at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't feel offended. I tried my best. So the tale of a project management by a project manager. So what does a project manager think about project management? So <laughs> hey, but this is not fictitious, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty real because. <laughs> <laughs> That's his friend. So, what exactly is a project? <coughs> so, when we think of a project, what exactly do we mean? There's an objective and there's a time. Time is everywhere. Thank you. So, a project is nothing. It's an idea, a unique idea which has to be completed within the stipulated timeline and agreed timeline. So I cannot have an idea 100 years back and implement it today. I will not be there to implement it. So a project is nothing but a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service or a result. So every project has to be unique in some or the other way. Say so take for example, can you give an example of a product? Of a project? CMO. CMO, yes. That's pretty permanent. Security is. <laughs> Security is not. It's a product. Okay, so we'll give more of other projects. So people say a person, a train driver driving a train from Bombay to Ahmedabad, is it a project? Yeah, yes. It's a service, it's not a project. So when I say service, at the end of the project, I don't go back to the driver and ask, congratulate him, you have completed my journey successfully. <laughs> so if a train driver trains me comfortably from point A to point B, I will not go back to him and congratulate him. But if a project manager completes his project, definitely everybody will go back to him and congratulate him. You have achieved something. How temporary? So a project necessarily needs to have a begin, end and end. Project has to begin and it has to end. It cannot go a lifelong project. We have one project running, Purple Club. So that is from starting till end, still it's executing. I don't know for how many days. And in some or the other way, in some or the other way. I know people leave and then. See, I wanted to take see, I wanted to take serious, but <laughs> I'm sure it is a. <laughs> so a project has to be unique. So what we did with Celio was a unique product, wherein we developed an app and engine which will help me to get points, accumulate points for customers by social integration. So that was some unique USB attached to it. So every project must have something unique. If it is not unique, it's not a project. Few great projects which have been successfully completed. Egypt, everybody knows. I don't know who made it, but it's completed. <laughs> Mars, sorry, Moon Mission. US and Greece, I don't know. Which <laughs> 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 so, was completed over some years. Shahjan, great. 
and there are few projects. So every project need not successfully complete, isn't it? There are few failures. Tata Nano as single. We have best of people thinking, we have written Tata himself thinking of making strategies, chief minister, prime minister, everybody, but one lady, Mamta Banerjee, screwed the entire thing. So people who invest, invested more than 1000 crore, that project had to be moved from one location to the other to start up. Ganga cleaning project, it's ages, 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 we have spent thousands of crores on that, but still it's not complete. <laughs> a movie is also a project. They started, they invested best, the best hero, the best graphic designer, everything was the best. I don't know what happened to the movie. Okay? So then if I have defined this as a project, okay, so to run a project, we need project management team to execute it. So when we say a project management team or a project manager, what exactly we think of first? What will be done by a project manager to execute a particular project? Okay, yes. Set expectations is very critical. And to form a team that might actually have the right skills that needed to fulfill the job. Yeah. So, this is my definition. I will give the actual definition also. So, project management is it's a minor part science of knowledge, knowing what to do and when. So ideating, putting plans, success, and then counting revenue. A minor part, huh? <laughs> so this is what a project manager does exactly. <laughs> Give excuses. This has not happened because of this, this, and all, isn't it? We shouldn't have put my pick in the situation. Okay. So project management is considered an accidental profession. People don't get into project management; they are forced to do project management. I will not comment on that too much. <laughs> okay. So there is an organization called as Project Management Institute, this PMI. Okay, which gives you a certificate course of professionally managing projects. We have Prince 2, we have project management, BMI. Okay, so people do enroll for these courses. We have MBAs who have done, who might have done some curriculum on project management during their MBAs. So project management is more of an art than science. I'll come to the finance part of it also. So what's a project management? The application of knowledge, skills, tools, techniques to project activities in order to meet the project requirements. So we use our knowledge, we use different tools, we use different techniques to execute a project. For us, if I am thinking of developing a website, I need to have developers, I need to have infrastructure, I need to have financer, I need to have server manager, I need to have security guy who will ensure that everything is in place. Should also have requirements. Eh? Sorry? Detail. Yes. Half the so requirement? Oh? Half the people don't know the requirement. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I wanted to tell you. you. You keep saying it, right? But you didn't say it here. <laughs> that is coming. That is coming, isn't it? So, a typical project like <coughs> initiating process, planning process, controlling process, executing process, and closing process. It's not by, drawn by somebody, by a kid or whatever, it's an actual graph. So this is how a project has to be divided in various cycles. So I need to initiate a project where it, my requirement gathering, my scoping, my stakeholder expectations have to be clearly documented and we should be very much clear about what we are supposed to deliver. If I don't know till this time what I am supposed to deliver, I don't know what I will deliver yet. If this exceeds here, I don't know why it will be the product and how it will be managed. So if a project manager is there, what he needs to do? He needs to, if he needs to spend 11% of his time on his project execution, 23% on project planning, 27 in project execution, 21 in project control, 9% in project closing. Closing is very important. We don't know how to close our projects. If 
finally to yes. get a final sign off from the client from the stakeholders yes the project has been done completed move on so once the project begins and once the project ends after that that project has to move into a operational maintenance cycle project is ended then it has to move into maintenance but if you don't get a project into maintenance life long your project development cannot start and professional responsibility what i mean by that professional responsibility being accountable ethics accountable documentation everything is proper you are just putting hands up there okay so characteristics of a project is the time and the degree of influence what a person can do so initially in the project stake holder has to play a important role risk has to import, play a important role and uncertainty what we are supposed to deliver so if you see if i don't know what i'm supposed to get the cost of change as the project duration increases it will keep on going by and our projects are always there correct here or not how many people agree we are our projects are mostly here i'm talking about our projects here let me see. are everybody is everybody very clear what the stakeholder wants no answer i guess it is i'm because i i guess like it's the responsibility of uh, like client servicing or cd about the technical team together to set the expectations correct if you set the expectation correct you will automatically come over here so see what are the clients are never really sure of the requirement like what exactly he wants so because i'm sure we are pretty clear on the risk and the uncertainty i would say okay we will know about this he might go ahead without even knowing there are challenges but yes we pretty much know risk and uncertainty do exist but the cost of changes will keep on increasing the moment time goes by exactly so okay. every time you come with a change every later stage the cost of that will automatically go high in actual what are the phases of a project Responsible for executing that particular project. 
a very unlike, pick up a metro train example. I cannot have people from here and there working, so there has to be a dedicated team working on that project if it is a completely projectized environment. So I have functional projects and I have projectized projects. This is what I have picked up from a PMI straight away is in a functional organization, project man manager's authority is very less. That means if I am a project manager, okay, I will be highly dependent on somebody else's team member to contribute to my project. But if it is a project, I don't want to use that word, I need dedicated people for my team to work, which I don't get. But if I am executing a project, I need to ensure that there are dedicated people with set of responsibilities and KRAs associated to them along with timelines which will help you to complete that particular project. Resource availability also, resource is very critical because in a functional environment, you don't get dedicated people working on that project. So that person might be doing something else. If he gets time, he will spare time for your projects also. In a project, other way around, you have dedicated people who are working towards the success of their particular project, success of their particular goal, what they have already thought of. So in project management, there are different processes which are involved. There are too many different processes. I don't know after this how many people will think of these processes. There are actually 47 documented processes to manage a particular project. 47. From the point of starting till the point it is closed. The areas of that, there are those have been classified into all the other areas. It's integration management, scope management, time management, cost management, quality management, human resource management, communication, risk management, and recruitment management. So I should be very, do we do all these phases in our projects? How many people do pick up any activity what they have done? Give me an example of each. Project integration, we leave this in. Scope management, who gets into scope? What is scope? What is scope of a project? Defining expectations. Okay, and? Understanding the risk involved and... Uh, so that is separate section. Huh, but but what is scope? Know exactly what the end product is going to be like. And knowing like it's exactly fulfills all the requirement of whoever is getting it. And state of acceptability to the stakeholders. What does that mean? That means the stakeholder will say, yes, I am happy with your product. Now, who can be a stakeholder? End user. One, yes, end user. Who is paying for it? Financer. So, fine, who is paying for it? Maybe direct, maybe indirect. And? Internal teams. Which is the functional teams, yes. And? The public at large, the brand equity is a stakeholder. It's a vision, it's a strategy more of a project. So how does the project start? By the way, what initiates to the project? A requirement, a vision. A project is always initiated by a vision. If there is a problem, set of problems that you want to resolve or whatever it is, and then it percolates down to the different teams where those define those, those people define the scope. I need to build a fastest car in India Marega, so I, it needs to be fuel efficient. It needs to comply with government organizations and all those stuff. Those will come in the picture. Time management. Who does time management? Properly. What is time management? Timely execution, timely delivery. These are outputs of that time management. What is time management? Efficient properly. Efficient buffering of time. Proper planning of deliverables. Proper planning of deliverables. So we have to plan our deliverables at what time, what I am supposed to complete. So today is something that I need to complete, that is time management. Whether it gets completed or not is a separate question. But we have to accordingly do all those things. Cost management, <coughs> the most critical component. I'll elaborate on this how to manage cost and how do we calculate profitability of a particular project. 
So whether the particular project is profitable, non-profitable, how do we calculate that? There is, there is a lot of science involved in this. So project management is not all about gap. It is actually about values which are getting documented in the Excel sheet. What, how much profitable my project is. One area which is very critical is risk management. So what is risk? What is this? Anything which can prevent execution of your project as per timeline or as per your plan. There are known risks, there are unknown risks. <coughs> what is an unknown risk? Example? Natural calamity, yes. Potatas, Mamta Vajani. For us, network. That is a known risk. That is a known risk. Now. Okay, economic downturn in a specific industry. Yes. This video is going to be banned in first of all. Okay, so, risk. See, what, what happens with the risk is, we have to plan for risk and risk mitigations. Actually, what is a project? Project is also nothing but transfer of risk. If a particular capability is not there with me, that is risk to me if I execute it. So, what am I doing? I am passing on that risk to someone else as a project that they will execute it properly. Correct? You know the process, 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 you know the you know the process, you know the process, you know the process, what do you do? You outsource that particular bit as a project to someone else. How all these things are integrated? So I need to tightly integrate scope with time, with cost, with quality, with human resource, communication and risk. So there has to be a centralized team of integration who will manage this complete project. Scope cannot be indefined, indefinite, timeline has to be there, cost will be there, quality, do we emphasize on quality nowadays? No, we do we. Yes. Okay, so there are there are ISO certifications and there are all wherein people comply, they have to comply for quality. Six Sigma and all human resource is the most critical wherein they will provide you the people. I ask for a 10 years experienced guy, I will get a pressure. <coughs> Isn't it? Okay, so that might be a risk. So these are different groups, knowledge areas of particular project management and above are the project life cycle phases. So in initiation phase, I need to fix the project plan. During planning, I need to scope planning and scope definition, which is very clear, and so on and so forth. So these are 47 different areas in which I need to concentrate while I'm executing a project. So next time if the requirement comes to me as a project manager, I will take on all these things. Whether I have got scope, whether I have identified risk, whether Cost is there, quality planning is there, all these things are there or not. If I am not doing all these things, I am not doing justice to my project management. Who is the project manager? stakeholders expectations but that is what a project manager needs to 
manage it. I have brought analytics into this. We are analytics. So top 10 challenges faced by project manager. Bureaucracy, admin overhead, this will not go, that will not go. People complain to project managers, we are overworked. Project manager keeps on complaining, I am understaffed. <coughs> project manager will always come to you, there are always change in specification, that means I am not sure what I am supposed to deliver and half of the people say that, I don't know what project management they are doing. Change is coming too fast, you say something, one, another thing, tomorrow, day after, I have got request on the same thing. So agile also today morning I have got something. After one hour later I cannot get something else. Once next hour I cannot get. So that timeline reduces. Iteration still are there. So the cost overhead of that particular project is always there. <coughs> agile you have spread of three days. Minimum three days. Yes. If in three days I give you thirty times the same requirement, then Deadlines not agreed upon. Deadlines, on, I don't know how we can make people agree. Staff skill gaps, technology out of date, staff turnover. And ultimate challenge, delivering value to the customer. For a particular project manager. So how to start a project? If you want to start a project, how to start a project? Identify key stakeholders. So I am giving a very high level flow of how to drive a particular project. Identify key stakeholders, develop WPS. WPS, what is WPS? Work breakdown structure. I should be at least aware of what I am supposed to do in terms of activities. The smallest unit of a work breakdown structure is the component which can be delivered independently. A component which can be delivered independently by some person. So take for example, I need to pull a campaign list. So pulling out a campaign list is an independent activity. I need to execute that campaign, upload on the, it's an independent activity. I need to break my projects into all these smaller structures. Define a project plan. We need to have a project plan in place. Cost estimation, what is going to be the cost of that particular project, classify risk and possible mitigation. So if I am dependent on some external factors, I need to classify them in my project. So if this doesn't happen, we may miss our timelines, we may miss our deliveries. The very first activity in a project is <laughs> so what we tend to do at the end of the day, network is a problem, and we blame someone. So who is the stakeholder? A project sponsor is a stakeholder, business function is a stakeholder, customer is a stakeholder, operations team is a stakeholder. So if I am developing a project and I need to hand over to the people, they need to manage it. Operations, they are the stakeholders. Unica is an example, wherein we developed something, we wanted to hand over back to them, but they were not ready to accept it. That operations come under our unknown stakeholder. She is Mokta Banerjee, what that does. Okay. How to manage stakeholders? That is very critical. Say Guru Mantra hi, Yaap Rakho, Maar Project Kabhi Galat Nii Jaega. So these four buckets are four different type of people. People who just keep an eye on that project. But they stop not of their interest and they are not key power decision makers. People who have power but interest is less, stakeholders. So if I am doing some project for a brand manager, the CEO of that particular company might not be immediate influencer into that project until it's driven by him, but we need to keep him happy, updated about what is there. So I need to keep him satisfied. 
people who have low power but more interest, at least you have to update, keep on constantly updating them. And today, customers. If you are able to pull out this thing, this matrix, I am sure your project will not go for a toss, at least in terms of managing that particular project. So give me an example of a real project where probably, who will you put in? Be satisfied. So I'll pick up a project from TBS Chennai, what we are doing currently. Okay, maybe CIO is a stakeholder, but on field marketing activity is not his key skill. Or he doesn't want an outing, he's not, he's not interested in that particular bit as an outcome. But it is his function, a CIO's function to give me executive. Give me, give me a Bombay example. Rahul Chandele, Tata, this Mahindra. So Rahul Chandele is a key stakeholder, he has high powers, he can ask some team to stop our project immediately, but he is not updated about every activity day to day basis. On day to day basis, brand launch and everything happens at our end. So Rahul Chandele is one, the CEO might be another person who is there, which may not be involved directly into day to day activities of day to day projects, but he is a key stakeholder. If he says no, somebody senior says no, your project ends there. So therefore you have to keep that guy satisfied? Yes. Okay. Manage closely. So if the brand managers are happy, other than will not have a problem. Okay. So I am doing a particular activity for a particular brand, and activity is doing very good, so it not be unhappy. For example, we did a campaign for Mahindra Farm. We did a very good campaign for Mahindra Farm. Yes. I don't know whether the results have been shared with the team all across, but we did. So the outcome of that campaign was accepted by CEO and everyone, very senior management. So they were informed about it, they were satisfied, that is why the project is still on. So they were satisfied with the number of iterations which we did over a period of time. At the end of the day, they were happy with the results, that is why I am keeping them satisfied and keeping, keeping them updated. Do you so, so want uh, to share your plan? So this guy, Amol Desh Pandey is who? Keep satisfied. Keep satisfied. Yes. Hmm? He is keep satisfied. Vijay Bosley is monitor. Okay. So people who are at junior level in that particular thing, they are, I have to monitor them. Sanjay Gar. I'm not uh, service customer service. I would say keep informed. Huh? Keep informed. Okay. So in our brains, we should be very clear how we classify our stakeholders. So whom I'm writing mails on day-to-day -day basis, which mail has to go at what time. So these four buckets are very clear. I am sure my project is under control. If these four buckets are not clear. So, hyper city who will it be? Hyper city, sir, uh, Darshana will be keep satisfied. Okay, and uh, Vishwanathan, Dorinda, and Saket, they will be managed closely. Uh, no, Saket will come into uh, keep in mind. Access bank? Sohini should be keep satisfied. Sorry? Sohini should be keep satisfied. I would say. Megha should be monitored. Actually, for that we require a third dimension like knowledge access. <laughs> so sometimes like if you yeah. see in case of uh, Megha, high says power, high interest, no knowledge. No, no, definitely PMI says this only. <laughs> There's more third dimension. <laughs> no, no, so, so the challenge was that because I mean, uh, I'll tell you the challenge. Like if, uh, Megha has the power, Megha has interest in wants to know each and everything in the depth of the knowledge. But due to the lack of knowledge, she can't grasp it. So it becomes difficult to manage closely. I mean, like we would just uh, stay it uh, on a keep satisfied level. Yeah. I mean. So then we just reduce our interest so that project yeah. doesn't bomb. Not even satisfied, I would say keep informed. Tell <coughs> okay, this is what so, it is. So low, actually, low, low power, high interest. Yeah. So Mega yeah. sits and keep informed. Actually, I would, want, I would want to put Bani there and Mega and monitor. That's, ah, correct. That's what I would want. Because tell me something, I mean, when you say keep satisfied, you only took name of those people who are like in the top in the chart, okay? I actually don't agree with this. Sometimes, someone like even Sanjay Gupta, Sanjay Gar, who are on the top of the hierarchy, they are someone who, even if we keep them informed, it's more than enough. For me, Rahul Chandila is an uncertainty, which we couldn't really predict he would be coming into picture. So I would put them not that is the hierarchy, this is my individual bond or rapport which I share with each person. Okay, so my, when I said hierarchy, when I meant hierarchy, my person who are owning exactly. that project is a key person there. Right. 
So we need to put them accordingly. Accordingly, it means the hierarchy. It will be individual project. So some projects is driven by Rao Sinha directly. So automatically he becomes managed closely for me. So right now if he is driving some project with me, he becomes managed closely. So I think I think more importantly, what I like about this is in your day to day. Uh, even if it's a small campaign that you're running or a small an, uh, you know analytics project that you're running to me the way i'm seeing it is you know can you identify who is owning it can you identify who is going to be taking it can you identify what that person is going to do it in, internally inside the organization so therefore the person who's asking for it might be different but the person who's actually presenting it might be different right. okay so sometimes what we do is that we pr- try to keep on and satisfied but the fact is that actually it will be somebody else who is presenting and therefore if you don't understand that you will never reach out to that person asking him what he wants because many a times anand might not be able to understand what that person wants that's why rework happens many times so right so therefore i think this is a very nice way of actually putting it together and say okay a requirement comes now why is this required i think that's the role of a uh you know i would say a front end client guy saying that okay is moli kapoor going to be presenting to the zonal heads which means that what will she want pooja is actually you know she will you have to manage her closely pooja will call our buckets huh? <laughs> no it's okay but what i'm trying to say is that then you have to manage it closely closely but you have to ensure that what are you doing it for i think that's a very important thing and many a time we miss it therefore we tend to kind of actually uh, you know uh, rework a lot of times because we do not know who we are interacting who with who who is it for therefore you have to break it down and understand it that's the role this if i am able to classify all of my clients different touch points in these four buckets and correctly identify your half of the job is done so I was speaking about work breakdown structure, so I am just speaking about very basic example of an interview. Interview scheduling will also involve these number of activities. So scheduling an interview is also not an easy job. Till the time you call up that candidate for the first time, till you ensure that he is either hired or rejected, offer is rolled out or not rolled out. there are different segments of that particular which i need to ensure so i can have a job broken down in this structure also which we should do and at a very high level if i want to have a management life cycle so this can be my big round structure for that project initiation planning so if i have nothing today i am supposed to pitch for a project i need to have all these things blocks in my mind very clear so i need to have project management definition system design system development implementation and transitions to steady state i need to have this structure very clear that i need to fill in details in all these blocks if i am missing out blocks here that means i am not controlling that project efficiently so i go to the earlier one it was very interesting one. so I, what i want to do is uh, for my own learning so a client calls for a ad hoc analysis so that's the requirement yes. now let us see what are the breakdown structures. breakdown structures of that so a client calls somebody says boss i want this analysis amol so how will you prepare a breakdown structure and what are different components will be there and who will you assign it to Guy is supposed to take a job, so I got a requirement for ad hoc analysis today. 
there is a brief and you should do that after first i will check what is the resource availability first important thing is the resource availability before planning of anything yes so i have got a timeline if i don't have a resource available i need to hold that request at that very moment saying that i don't have a resource available for doing this once i have identified a resource whether the resource is skilled enough to do it so you have got a analyst requirement data card requirement but you need to identify whether a data guy can do it or an analyst can do it then what you need to have is if he can do it whether the resources are available to him so take for example the database access available to him so all the server access are available to him yes then the time required by that particular person to execute that particular task output and then confirming back to the client so when we say so project management is not passing on the control to someone else passing on the work with a designated outcome is project management so the way i i would i, I would kind of say is that you know project manager is like a coach he can't get down to the ground and play but if you don't win you will be actually blamed for it right if fletcher can't win the uh, indian series he is sad but he can't go out and play in the test match so therefore he has to say the batsman has to play well they have to play swing who can play swing so so clearly he needs to have control without actually controlling i think that's a very very tough task and that's the reason why i asked the question saying will you give this job to a data analyst will you give this job to a business analyst will you give this job to a campaign analyst now if this needs to be done what are the sub routines which are there is that person doing it how how often do you go out and check it then do you converge then when the output comes are you actually telling people that you know i think there is a time gap can you push it can you ensure that it is done that amount of detailing is required many times you know it is just forwarded as an email and then you know the expectation is at around 5:30 i need it okay i have seen that most of the times and you know i know it happens so at 5:30 boss hey are you here you know did you come to me three times did you check what is the issue can you do an interim review of what i am actually at 5:30 we the question will be boss whatever you pulled the data is wrong okay why could we do one interim sample to say is this what is needed so then it would have stopped you from actually doing the whole thing again so at every level whether i am a client manager or whether i am a uh, you know the person running the analytics when i am actually doing the campaigns everything is about actually breaking down those little tasks and that becomes very critical and to me that is where i think this this kind of a, to me this is a very interesting chart so every for every activity we should have this chart yeah. if i get this chart correct first go i am on track almost on track i'll not miss anything there see and first of all a project manager job is a thankless job so if the project is executed successfully you will not get the credit but if it gets screwed up definitely you will be fired so because once you uh, i i <coughs> Current current situation, I think current scenario for all across all the villages regarding the campaigns, we don't get any timelines. The request is coming in five four o'clock, and we have to execute six o'clock. We have to execute that campaign at six o'clock. There is no option of four. So, actually, not put it on slide. So, who is a bad project manager? So, people who say yes to everything is a very bad project manager. So, across all villages, everybody is bad manager. That's simple. If you don't go back to client, say tell them this is possible, this is not possible, then you are not doing justice to your work. But even if we deny it, they go and they escalate the matter and change to the top man. That's a different issue. That's not a project management issue. But then again, it's coming. If if we deny it, if we say no, we can't do it, they they escalate the matter. So, so, so the the uh, alternative that I am talking about is what was supposed to be delivered never got delivered. That's why uh, you know no, what the client says. No, no, no. I'm just giving an example. Debate. So what clients do? You give me a timeline, you execute. Correct. But when you gave me a timeline last time, you did not execute. So therefore, they also buffer their, uh, you know, uh, delivery times, right? So I think that's a this constant fight between the client and us. So if I test, most important part: cost management and profitability of my project. 
at the end of the day it's all about numbers whether my project is profitable or not so all the jam pehle ke side mein chala gaya now we come to actual numbers and how to compute those numbers i'll not tell you how to compute but at least give you what are different parameters which we need to ensure we compute for ourselves to keep our project in check so what how do you estimate how do you estimate Same work under same condition will be estimated differently by ten different estimators. You estimate, I estimate, somebody a client will estimate, client will estimate half an hour, I will, we will estimate five hours. The negotiation will happen at two and a half hours. The escalation will happen at two and a half hours. <coughs> Correct? Okay. Or by the same estimator at ten different times. So, sobe ka estimate, char ghante, sham ka estimate, do ghante, raat ka estimate, aadhe ghante. So, our estimates also is not constant. we should be very sure what are we estimating for what is the project is complete i can not estimate what cost is <coughs> at least i can okay this is for some this is for some set i put to have some dashboard in place every day for every project okay project complete date cost budget date task lead time resource allocation and all those maybe the parametrics the parameters which we do is an earned value management so we have planned value so when i start up a project i'll not go into much of detail over here that when i start up a project at every day i need to have planned value of work which i am completing and if i am not i am overshooting it up below underworking it's my problem then then it will hit my budgets so if i have three resources who are supposed to complete a task in one day because of some reason if three people are not able to complete that task that means i have already spent the budget of my resources i have spent time on it cost is already gone so if i am paying 1000 dollars every day to three people and my day has gone i have already burned that particular budget of mine that means my project is already in negative then we start planning for how to recover but you can't recover once the time has gone time is gone so if you have planned for a task which gets completed in 10 days and if you delay by 3 days you are actually over spending on that particular value at the end of the every day i would like to calculate earned value of my particular project how much work have i completed whether it is relevant irrelevant whatever it is is there any value associated to it okay actual cost budget at completion versus performance measurement baseline this numbers formally we decide okay so these are some calculations which are required cost variance schedule variance schedule performance index cost performance index These are key parameters which the project manager should maintain for his project, not in terms of absolute cost, but at least in terms of efforts. Once the efforts are there counted, we know what efforts are going into that project. I will get this thing very clear. So, how many people think schedule variance is a positive number or negative number? What it should be ideally? Schedule variance should be positive or negative? Positive. Earned value versus. Planned value. Positive. Positive is good. Negative. Negative means. So how will you how will you do it in our situation? In in CQD's example, for example, if it is a given project, then I can do it. But here, for example, the client is asking for daily ad hoc analysis. They are asking for presentation. So how will you kind of Presentation can become a project. Ad hoc analysis is a part of a service which I am offering. I cannot compute so this is a service based thing because the timeline is too less. Presentations we can have. So this presentation will take me ten hours. So if I am not able to estimate it correctly in day one, ten hours of my analyst time will go into that. And if I am over burning that, so the presentation which was supposed to cost me say, X thousand because of time, I am actually doubling the cost. No, more interesting for me what you are saying is. Do you go back and actually estimate how much time an analysis took? Yes. And then every day, then say that am I improving it? Uh, you know, with the amount of resources that I have. So I think that's a very important 
metric for you to look at EV minus PV, right? Yes. Yeah? Yes. But it happens with the major of the bigger projects when we actually have milestones, resources allocated, and we track on day to day basis. So when we fill time sheet, okay, so actually we are trying to hmm. get this information from that. Fortunately or unfortunately, right now we are not able to do it. So once I get what value I am giving to my client and what is supposed to be planned, then automatically these key matrices will be there for us to evaluate. This is project manager's job to keep a track of these numbers. Okay, so this is a curve. Normally it's an S curve. Okay, so you have something in between of actual cost and planned cost. Okay, so then whatever you get number, it's a good one. If it goes beyond it, then it's a problem. I'll not take this. Okay, so these are all KPIs which I need to calculate, but these are critical numbers. These are critical formulas which will actually help me to track my project versus budget versus effort for I am spending on a project. This at times is very critical to calculate profitability of any account, any project. If I have, don't have these numbers, I will never be able to calculate anything. Because what is the timeline for project the project can be of one day, two days, two years, twenty years. It has a defined set of requirements and a definite output. It is a project. So it's always possible to link it back to the reliability. Yes. So that's that's the reason why time sheet becomes critical. So what you are saying is that I have so many people and resources. I have so many work that I deliver every day. Then I say that okay, so much gets done, and therefore. How much of value am I giving back to the client? You have to go back and have that discussion with the client, right? We don't do that. So many times what we find is that the data is not available for us. Sorry? No, I agree. I agree. So, see, everything at the end of the day is supposed to be linked back to billing. If I am not able to put a value to it, to a particular task, that means I am not controlling or monitoring the project efficiently. Or more importantly, the way I see it is, if you know these are the resources that are there, then even when a requirement comes, you will need to optimize it for that requirement also. That also is very important. Should I be doing more than what is required? Should I be optimizing it? These are, I think, sensitive. You know, there is no math to it. It's a, it's a, it's an art, right? Finally, we are dealing with uh, human beings, right? I think that becomes important. This project management is true for manufacturing and for all the sectors. It's just the way of doing it changes from case to case basis. Okay, so this is a normal tracker which I need to track every day basis. Activity A, budgeted hours, completed, actual man hours, earned value, and all this stuff. If I'm able to track this sheet on daily basis, maybe on weekly basis, a monthly basis, I'll be actually on top of my project every day. So every task will have budgeted man hours, completed, and actual man hours spent on that. I am able to track this efficiently, that means I am in control of my project. It's a very simple sheet to maintain, but mostly it happens with the projectized environments. So the ultimate objective is to get sign off. Project manager's ultimate objective is to get sign off from client. For which I guess Access Bank Dash is carrying that huge book up to get a sign up one every day basis. And get from client 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 on every activity. This was the client satisfaction survey. <laughs>